So, good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Muhammad Bakr, and we are going to introduce Fisher Massive System, a new product in our range. Uh, I would like firstly to split the time into three main categories, which is firstly the duration of the webinar that will take almost 45 to 50 minutes, and then questions and answers. It will take on 10 minutes. However, for the more questions, we can get uh, the answers by email, and then going to the poll and the feedbacks from you guys, it will take only five minutes. Uh, actually, for Peter experience and before starting, I would like you to use Google Chrome or Firefox. If you can avoid the Internet Explorer, it would be good. And please, if you have any downloads while you are attending this webinar, if you can just pause it, because it will affect the uh, speed of the, 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 the screen itself and the voice. The questions will be answered at the end. And however, for the other more questions also will be emailed to you. And there will be also gifts for the correct answers while doing the webinar. Uh, so this is the screen that you are going to see or that or you are seeing right now. You will having on the right side, the chat, the one that you are talking to, to me from. If you have any notices, you can just chat from there. And for any questions that will be answered at the end of the presentation, you can just very easily type it in the questions tab. And then after finishing, we are, you are going to answer some small bolts that will reflect your feedback about the webinar in general. You can increase your screen using this button that will al allow you for full screen mode. So let's go ahead. Uh, this is Mohammed Bakr again. We are going to talk about Fisher Massive System in this webinar. So a brief introduction about myself. My name is Mohammed Ahmad Bakr. I am a field technical engineer. It has been almost two years experience in Fisher related to the uh, technical field in fixations and supporting systems. I am mainly into mechanical and anchor uh, mechanical and chemical anchors design and also for the installation systems. I've been a graduate from King Fahd University of Petroleum and Minerals from a civil engineering background and I have also been awarded as a promising technical engineer in the company in 2019. So for the people who would ask what could be the webinar talking about, I will be starting about giving a brief introduction about Fisher Massive System and then why shall we go for the Fisher Massive System? And what could be the main differences or the advantages of using FMS or Fisher Massive System over the normal and conventional steel sections? What could be the accessories and connections that can be used to use and to create the, connect, to create the supports? And the most interesting part for you would which will be about the main applications that has been used and it's going to be used for the Fisher Massive System. So the general question, what is Fisher Massive System or FMS? In a straightforward definition, it will be highly engineered recessed profile. It has been designed to take the higher level of loads, comparing to the normal seat channels, comparing to the normal conventional steel sections. And as of now, we are having three main profiles, which is the massive system FMB, which is Fisher Massive Profile 90, and Fisher Massive Profile 120, and our gained or giant product, which is Fisher Massive, Fisher Massive Product, or Fisher Massive Profile 160. The difference here is mainly about the height of the profile. In a general speaking, we can say, for the Fisher Massive Profile 120, it can take loads going up to 25 kilonewton. We are talking about 2.5 concentrated force of kilonewtons, while for the 163 profile, it can take up to 45 kilonewton. You can just imagine how huge of taking a concentrated force of 4.5 tons. What are the main properties we are talking about here? 
we are having a type of square recess. We are talk. We are going to talk what does recess mean in the upcoming slides. We are having thicknesses of four millimeter for the 90 and 120 heights. However, for the 160 mm height, we are having a thickness of five mm in order to cope for the stresses and the loads generated on that specific profile. All the sections having a general wet of 90 mm for the ease in installation outside. And that connection or the profile will allow us for the 3D or 4D connections and scaling dynamic loads. And our material mainly comes in a hot dip galvanized, also in a stainless steel. Uh, let me first, and before going, let's, let me introduce a video talking generally about the system. So let's go ahead. So this video is mainly talking about the different types of massive systems in terms of profiles and connections. Actually very efficient in fixing, especially for the heavy duty installations for any types of higher loads and installations. One of the main advantages here, simply easy in cutting comparing to the normal steel structure that will create a big headache in cutting. And we are having our main key player, which is the hammerhead connector. You just plug it, rotate, and done. You can easily fix your connections to the profiles. As it's shown here in the video, you just place it in its hole, you just rotate it, and then simply you can fix the connection. You just push it down, rotate it, and then done. And with the help of the plastic spring. Then, for any types of preposition, we are going to talk about what does coming slides. Very easy in adjustment for the current installed connections after applying torque. Very easy to change the location and making the assembly and reassembly in no time. However, for the push through installation, when the connection is there or the bracket is there, you just place the connector and done. One of the greatest advantages here that no need for cutting, no need for drilling, no need for welding and galvanization at site. We are going to talk about this mainly in the advantages. Very easy installation for any kind of support, wall support, wall mounted, floor mounted, and also for different types of surfaces related to the industrial or in the planned construction. So again, it is the efficient solution for the heavy duty installation as we are going to see in the upcoming slides. So the question that would emerge to the people, why shall we go for the Fisher Massive System instead or like uh, in replacing the normal conventional steel? Or in another question, what could be the advantages of using Fisher Massive System over the traditional, the normal steel sections? Here we are talking about I-beams or the C-channels or the tubes or even for HEA or HEB beams. Going to the main advantage, which is highly engineered recessed profile. This is what we have already mentioned in the definition of the Fisher Massive Profile. And in order to make it easy, and what does recess and what does highly engineered mean, we can see, as we can see here, for the cross section of our system or our massive profile, you will notice that you will have kind of some grooves and some changes in the section. It's not coming to be a bulk tube or a bulk square shape. It has a kind of recessions or recess. Um, in a general speaking or in a general uh, understanding for what does recess mean, I would like to show you on, on the camera, for example, if we are having just this normal paper and if you'd like to load it from the middle it will be easily bent it will be easily bent as we can see here in the video however if we have the same paper the same co configuration however the paper is folded in different types and then you put the bend it will be very easily taking the load so the same type of paper has was able to take the load this is 
because of the recessions or the folds or a kind of groups grooves we are doing in the section itself. So these kinds of grooves will not only reduce the weights, but it will also has been designed with after different trials in the in the in the plan or in the test that it will give us higher load. So these recessions has not done been haphazardly, it has been done as we're tests on site, has been main trials in order to reduce the weight and to give higher loads comparing to the normal steel sections. Then talking to another main advantage here, which actually one of the important advantages that will uh, be very important also for the for any related people to the, the field, a huge reduction in cost and time. And how is this done? By avoiding cutting, avoiding drilling. So at the case of the site, usually you need to cut the normal conventional steel into specific sections and you need to create some drillings and some specific points however if you would like to change the locations of the drilling it will be very hard it will be very consuming for time and labor cost and going to the another main advantage and i would like to take you to the story of how it's done in welding and galvanization outside because what is mainly happening and after you have been doing the design of the structural design of the steel, you need to create the welding between the members. However, doing the welding will be very costly, will be very taking much time because of two reasons. Firstly, most of the sites are not allowing welding at sites. And then after doing the weld outside the field and then going back again you need to check by the quality con control by the qc that the welding has been done in accordance to the thickness and in accordance to the right length so then a constructive test will be done and this constructive test for the welding is very costly and very time consuming and then after going through all this process you need to jump again to the galvanization after finishing the welding and also you need to make sure that the galvanization thickness has been done as be required which is also huge taking time uh, in 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 the in in construction however for our massive system it's actually prefabricated no need for cutting no need for drilling no need for welding and galvanization because it will mainly come galvanized and I would like to ask you, do you usually face this issue related to the steel steel construction? Is it is it that is creating that headache? I'm waiting for your answers or your experiences related to that field. If anybody has a kind of do you usually face this kind of headache related to welding galvanization for any steel structure? Well, maybe you can answer at the end of the uh, presentation. Yeah, Mr. Muhammad actually is saying actually a big hit, a big header related to the welding and galvanization, cutting also outside. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad, for answering. And then going to another main advantage here. And before uh, jumping to any advantage, uh, here, Actually, it has been done a kind of graphs, a kind of comparison graphs between the classic steel construction and the heavy duty system. And we are here comparing in terms of pricing of material, pricing of engineering, and pricing of assemblies. And after many steel structures has been done, and after many heavy duty systems, and after in some internal designing and internal building for the heavy duty system, it has been found that a huge reduction you can see in the labor time, a huge reduction it can, can be seen in the labor time and the labor cost. Because as if you know, and in the principles of construction management, time is money so when you're re reducing the time of the activity you are reducing the time of the project reducing the cost of the project in total so and as of the advantage of our system by reducing the time of labor because there is no need for any kind of welding there is no need for any kind of drilling no need of any kind of galvanization a huge reduction can go up to 30 percent 
and I would like to ask you, what do you think of this percentage? Is it is it is it good enough comparing to um, a kind of total cost of the project? What do you think? Actually, Mr. Anas is saying and uh, replying to this question is a very big headache. And once the equipment has been placed to give additional support. So he's saying about once you have already placed the 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 the, the equipment and then you cannot very easily make any adjustment on the on the on the on the support itself. However, for the massive system, it's just a plug and go. And Mr. Ihab is saying that 30% cannot be considered a small percentage for sure. And I'm agree, I'm totally agree. Even any kind of 10, 15 percent would be very huge reduction in cost if you are talking about mega or many big projects. Mr. Abdurazik, he's he's uh, I disagree a little bit. He's saying that it can be a 25%. I agree with him since it's actually a kind of internal testing. It cannot give a kind of a precise percentage. However, a 25% also would be a great advantage for the project in terms of reducing the cost on time. Then, after talking about two main advantages, going to the third important one, which is the thick coating of hot dip galvanized virgin. And as I have mentioned before, that the system is coming to be hot dip galvanized, thick coating of hot dip galvanized that can reach up to 75 micrometer. And since we are mostly talking in JCC countries, we are having an aggressive huge corrosive environment whether you can find it in the soil the different types of chlorine and chloride minerals or you can find this aggressive corrosion also in the uh, moisture and in the air itself and if these sections has not been designed to 100 years so there's no uh, like a kind of use usage or no benefit of using the system However, if you're having a, such a thick coating of 75 micrometer, very easily you just can you just put it there. However, the corrosive environment it can still it has been done, it has been built to last. And going again, one of the more one of the most important thing that we are having a kind of uh, versatile. We have various type products in terms of profiles and in terms of connections. I would like to use this picture as a demonstration. For example, uh, you are having the three main profiles. If you would like the 90 by 90, you're having the 90 by 120, and you have the 90 by 160. So the height of the section will mainly be determined um, as per the design criteria. However, for example, if you're having a low possible loads so we usually it's not it's not efficient to go to the 90 by 160 so we are trying to make the optimum design using the lowest possible section also here in this picture we can see a kind of different connections it's just a kind of plugging just a kind of legal game for example we have in the bracket connecting the uh, members to whether to the floor whether to the ceiling or whether to the wall or even to the to the floor. And then we are having different types of connection, for example, connecting vertical member to the horizontal member using the brackets. We are having uh, the possibility of having two, two um, intersecting and two intersecting channels by using this connection. We are having the connection to, to create a cross, um, a cross like across a shape between the, 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 the horizontal and the vertical members. We are having the U-poles. We are having the fixed poles that we are going to talk deeply about in the connection and accessory section. Then a great main advantage that all sides are shaped holes. And I would like to use the upcoming picture for demonstration. For example, if we are having shaping holes from the four sides, what do you think it will help? It will help in creating easily a 4D connection without any kind of adjustments. So for example, you just put the connector from each side and then you can create your exact level and it will be very helpful for any kind of 4D, 3D connections, for any kind of grid connections, for example, raise the floor or for electrical supports. What's the great advantage also that 
uh, unlike, un unlike the other types of massive systems in the market, there is no through poles here needed. You just fix it from one side. So it will give you the flexibility in making the leveling exact for the same for the all connections. And it will give you the flexibility to adjust your leveling the way you want. Then coming to the, our key player here, which is the hammerhead push connector that will help us actually in connecting the brackets into the profile. What is the main advantage here? Very flexible, you just plug it and go. You can tie it and untie it very easily. It will allow us also for creating any types of connections, whether which is a preposition, which is where the connector would be placed first and then you put your bracket or the vice versa, which is the push through connection while you want to adjust the bracket while it's already installed. So you can imagine how flexible is that in creating any small adjustment or even any big adjustment in the structure without affecting the total structure. In the next slide, I would like you to see a video that will describe this in a little bit more detail. So let's go ahead and see it to each other. Okay. So the video here is going to show about the different types of fixations of the system and how usually we are connecting the bracket with the profile. So here we are having the three main profiles, which is the 90 by 90 and 90 by 120 and 90 by 160. And you can imagine how huge the sections are and how is he more huge and huge when you are seeing this in the real field. Just a giant project, a giant, a very giant pro product actually. And then here, very easily to adjust in millimeters while the bracket is already installed very easily would be very effective and enabling you to the side to do any manipulation without any affection to the total system. And then this is the shape of the connector. If you would like to make it while you're putting the brackets, you just plug it, applying the torque, and then here we go before adjusting the bracket, of course. And then if you would like to put firstly your bracket or your connector and then you place your connection very easily that you can put it applying the torque and very flexible. And then going to the last advantage here, which is the security nut. And the security nut, it will create the basis of sustaining any kind of dynamic load. This is the member we are talking about, small, yet very effective. And it will create the fixing basis for the dynamic load, giving more additional safety to the dynamic load. However, as we all know that there's too, too many types of loads, however, the static loads that resulted from any dead load, however, we are having also dynamic loads related to the shock loads, related to the impact loads. So placing this small member into the connector will help in absorbing any kind of shock, any kind of impact load, that giving more safety to our system to be placed as already mentioned here in the picture. And then in order to recap, we are talking about highly engineered recessed profiles that the section has been engineerly designed to take huge load with the less cross-sectional weight. We are having a huge reduction in cost and time by avoiding welding, avoiding drilling, avoiding galvanization, avoiding cutting at site. And the thick coating of the hot dip galvanized virgin, which is 75 micrometer, will help you to avoid any kind of aggressive corrosion conditions at site. We have a different type products of profiles and connection. We are talking, going to talk about this deeply in the upcoming slides. All sides are shaped holes that will help us in creating 4D shades on the same level, it will help us also to adjust your leveling the way you are because each side has its own connection without any kind of through bolting. And finally, the security knot that will give you the basis of sustaining any kind of dynamic loads. 
And before going to the connections, what do you guys think of what is the main important advantage here between those six advantages? If you can just give us what is the number, what is the most important one? What could be the most important advantage here between those six type of advantage? Maybe you can also answer this at the end. So Mr. Ehab is saying number four, that you have different types of product that will allow you to create any kind of any shape of support you would like to do outside. Thank you, Mr. Ehab, for answering. Waiting for any suggestion or what you think of what could be the most important one. Abdul Razik is saying that it's number five. When you have all sides are shaved holes, you can give your uh, leveling very easily. Mr. Uh, Ali is saying number two, like a huge reduction. I agree with him actually because this is, could be the main important one. And Mr. Anas again also saying that all sides to be shaved holes, which is number five. Mr. Francis is also saying a kind of highly engineered recess profile would be the most important advantage to him. Thank you all for your answers. And then going to the accessories, going to the connections, mainly, and what is more important for you, that the connections shall be used, whether for the steel structures or whether for the concrete structures. However, sometimes you don't have the leverage to fix on concrete only or on steel structure only. So Fisher is giving the different and versatile types of connections that will allow you to fix whether in steel or whether in concrete. And starting by the flange or the bracket that will make a kind of solid connection between the channel and the structure. And we can use this bracket whether from ceiling, whether from the floor or whether on the wall. And then going to the angles, which is FMA3, which is the one showing on the left. It's mainly connecting two channels in front of each other. If we can see here, the channel are connected in front of each other. If you can see here, this also demonstration of due to the site limitation, for example, you will not be able to do it to be between the vertical members. You can have it easily in front of it. And it's called three because it can be connected through three connectors, two and one. Then jumping to the FMA4, it is mainly connecting. It's a kind of bracket connecting two perpendicular channels. And then here we can see this FMA4 is connecting the vertical and horizontal on the same level. However, we are having also a different type of package, which is FMFF and FMA90. People can I would ask what could be the main differences here. It will be mainly in two main differences. The load capacity for the for them it will be slightly different in terms of tension, in terms of shear, and in terms of moment. And also, due to the site availability, sometimes you'll not be able to use FMA4 because it will increase the total width. And at the case when you're having a limited width, you can use, for example, the FMFF because it will be from outside. Thus, reducing this distance. And we can also use the FMA90, where it will be going inside the horizontal member that it will also help in reducing the total width. Then jumping to the fixations on the steel, and it's very important for people to fix on steel, however the orientation is, we are having those two types of clamps, the threaded clamp and the channel clamp. So for example, for the threaded clamp, a great picture that will represent how it's very easy to fix by applying the threaded, fixing the bracket to the bottom flange or even to the top flange without any need for drilling, without any need for welding. You just apply your torque and then a pre-stress force will be done and then it will take a huge forces, especially in the axial and shear forces. However, this is related to fixing the bracket into the flanges. If you would like to fix the channel itself or the, gear, the section itself into the flange, easy you can using the beam clamp. As it's shown here in the picture, very easy. You just apply your, your torque and then done. No need for any kind of welding, no need of any kind of drilling. Then jumping to the 
fixation using the face plate and sometimes and there is due to the limitations of fixing on the flange of the i-beam itself that you just cannot access it or sometimes you are not using i-beam you are using kind of square beams or hollow beams you can use the base plate so this base place this uh, a base plate and using the concept of pre-stressing you just uh, applying the threaded rod connection very easily create a kind of full support for the huge and for heavy duty pipes can you imagine how easy is it in fixation and it will take care of any kind of steel type of orientation and then going to the angle bracket that will help you to create pressing and create fixation to the concrete whatever the angle is we can start from 0 to 180 that will help you to place your pressing as per the site condition as it's shown here in the picture applying a kind of full sub mounted support with bracing for two pipes two heavy duty pipes very easy to use the bracket in order to create your bracing and there's also an demonstration demonstrative picture showing the connection what we are talking about then jumping to the Clams related to the oil and gas industry or the vibes industry, we have we are having the fixed clamp, which is a kind of zit shape that will help you to create a fixing rigid point, especially for the case of the thermal expansion, which is the normal case found in different types of heavy duty vibes. You need to create a rigid fixing, especially at the expansion point and the expansion expansion points in the vibe itself jumping to the last connection the most important one is the pipe shoe and i am very i'm very sure that the pipe shoe is very important prefabricated element to all of the oil and gas industry what is special about it in fisher that it's coming a prefabricated it will come in different types of size can, can go up to 600 700 mm diameter of the pipe it can be used as a sliding point or it can be used as a fixing point. What could be the main determinant whether to be used as sliding or fixing by placing the, the plates just below the pipe shoe? Some sliding plates will allow you to create to be a slide and some fixing plates will help you to have this pipe shoe as a fixing point for fixing the pipe into the channel. And before going to the applications i want you to ask question what do you think of of this kind of connection what do you think what is the most important one or what what is the one do you think it's missing there and we are, we were talking about pipe shoes we were talking about the different types of brackets whether uh, on steel or whether on the concrete what do you think is the most important or what do you think is the, the important connections that you want to have in in the system Waiting for your answers. So Mr. Ryan is saying something related to the vibration absorption. So this is mainly related uh, to the uh, security knot that to help to take the vibrations also, which is kind of dynamic loads. So Mr. Khaled is asking what could be the question, um, asking what is the most important accessory that you have seen between those accessories and connections, or what is the connection that you feel it's missing there? So Mr. Khalid, mainly it is related to the steel structure. I agree with him for any kind of fixation on the steel structure would be the most important one since there is no need for drilling and there is no need for kind of any uh, uh, welding there. So Mr. Wasim, he's saying, can we use it in the seismic area? Of course, we can use it in the seismic area. And we will see it in the applications because there is a specific application related to the seismic areas. So let me jump to the application because I'm going to talk more about it to be very important. 
I'll be starting with the main important application related to the divider beams and elevator. And what is the case here? Usually we are having rails that will respond, be responsible for going, uh, responsible for co controlling the, the, the movement of the elevator. So basically we are putting a divider beam that will help us in resting the rail support on so it will help us also in having this movement very easily. What could be the challenges that we have faced or that we are going to face in the fixation of this kind of divider beams? We need to maintain a minimum deflection that can reach up to zero mm because this uh, leveling of the rail will affect the leveling of the elevator itself. So it has to be very much convenient that it will not affect the leveling of the elevator. And then, we need to utilize the member from four, four sides because from two sides we are fixing to the wall-to-wall -wall connection to the concrete and from the other two sides we need to fix that rail connection to the beam itself and then it will be uh, going again to one of the advantages, advantages of the section since it's a hollow from the both all sides you can easily utilize it from each side you want and because of the movement and especially at the time of the break at the case of emergency you will transfer a huge kind of huge high impact on dynamic load that is easily can be restrained and easily can be absorbed by the system because it can support the dynamic loads and also special thanks go to the security not helping in absorbing this one Jumping to the multiple heavy duty pipe surfaces, actually, this is a picture of a currently installed support in one of the main projects. And a huge challenges that we have faced related to this one, because as you can see here, it's just a wall to floor support of three or four layers, multiple layers. And each layer here will take up to four or five heavy duty vibes that can reach up to 300 mm, 350 mm of firefighting vibes or cast iron vibes. So a challenge here to sustain all these kind of members or these kind of uh, vibes on the same uh, on the same level, and this is also done by the technical uh, designs. Another advantage here or another challenge we have seen that the height of the support has reached up to 4.5 meter so we need to take care of this also we need to take care of the vertical member and be careful in this in the designs of it and we are also we have to be careful that the loads will be transferred fairly to the vertical member without any kind of uh, loss and then there are special requirements from the customer itself that the deflection of the horizontal member shall not a kind of exceed a kind of limit so this has been designed very carefully and as we have mentioned before that the profile itself it is becoming to be a highly engineered recess that will help to take huge load thus the sustain as high deflection as possible and for the last one i remember sitting with a client and the client he has asked to support make hundreds of supports in a very tight time because he need to hand the project and because and because of the privilege and because of the advantage of the system you just plug it and go we were able to sustain and we, we were able to fulfill his requirement by supporting 100 support very easily in a short period of time you just placing your connections placing your vertical horizontal members drilling on the concrete and here we go then jumping to another main advantage was the by racks for industrial area so the bipe racks basically is the portions where you need to transfer huge or heavy duty pipes from one industrial plant to the other. And what are the great challenges we are facing? That we are having longer spans because usually you are not allowed to utilize all the, uh, for example, floor or all the spans. And you need also to take care of any intersecting surface or any passing pedestrians for example and then the other main advantage here is the high elevation where 
the system and especially in the industrial area where we are having huge relatively horizontal force due to the wind and we are having huge horizontal force related to the seismic force and with this height that can reach up to 12 meter with this span that can reach up to also 12 meter then you have to take care of the vertical member that you do not sway and if you can see this picture, it has been mainly done by the normal C sections or the normal C channels. But just concentrate with me and see what will happen if we have replaced this kind of really congested headache supports with the massive system. With the same vibe, you just replace it very easily with the, with the massive system. You can just, just see how huge is the reduction in, in terms of the, the bracing, in terms of the vertical member and in terms of horizontal member. You have reached it from this level and from this complicated design only easily by reaching this very simple design with a small and the mo small uh, possible bracing available just only with a massive system and you can just imagine how easy is it to use the massive system over the normal and conventional c or uh, normal sections going to another main another application that very important to, to people in terms of seismic and thrust supports and we are talking about seismic it's the horizontal and vertical forces mainly related to the earthquakes loads and for the thrust support, it is the force that will result in the change directions in the elbows because of the huge change direction of the water inside. It will create huge impact load and it will create also huge pressure due to change in direction, especially in the horizontal way. So this is a proposal that has been done for one of the changing directions for the seismic and thrust supports. What could be the main challenge here? Huge impact loads because of the changing direction. The water itself, when it changes direction, it will hit the elbow very in a very huge uh, manner. And we can also say that for the connections, you can just imagine a horizontal force acting at the end or the bottom of the member, which is about 40 kilonewton. You imagine a horizontal concentrated force of four tons happening in a height of 2.5 meter so you just can imagine how it will be to the connection so the connection will has been to be designed very carefully and also bracing has to be done in the case and also due to the site limitation what could be the great, great advantage here in creating a thrust support that the bracing member the vertical member can be done as per the site, because usually when we're having MEB surfaces, that it will be hard to fix at any point you want. However, the system is very flexible if you'd like to make it in this direction or even in the perpendicular direction. Then going to the MEB heavy duty surfaces, I will be starting with the tunnel ventilation systems. That's the ducts basically running above the trains in the deep underground stations and metros. So what will happen is that we are having support will be just above the train to support the duct, which is a special duct that has a width of, can go up to six meter width. What were the challenges in that design? Mainly that we are having huge loads. We are talking about 400, or 500 kilogram per linear meter in a width of six meter. So you just can imagine how huge the stresses will be on the horizontal and the vertical members. A specification also we're requesting that the member can take up 200 or 400 degrees Celsius in two hours and sometimes 1000 degrees Celsius. So you can just imagine the reduction will happen to the member in the design. So the member was very effective to take care of this specification with the required span. And going to another surface, which is the H unit, which is the air handling unit. It is the unit that's basically uh, really um, uh, important in circulating, in circulating the uh, surfaces. The great challenges we have faced here, loads were very high. The geometry, because we have some access doors we need to take care of, and because of the dynamic loads. 
Then finally, for the raised floors with the high level of higher loads and in back loads, sometimes we can use the message system. We have already been using it in order to sustain the live loads and the impacting loads. By this, I'm finishing the applications and I'm finishing my webinar for the Fisher Massive System. I really hope that it was very helpful and very beneficial for you. I thank you again, and I'm waiting for your questions in the question tab. However, also after the questions, we need to go for answering some polls. I'm waiting firstly for your quick questions. So Mr. Khalid is saying for references for the divider beam application, just contact me after this one. I will give you the references needed and for also the elevator companies related and needed for the divider beam applications. And for Mr. Muhammad, he's asking about the slides. Let me also contact you. I'll give you the PDF version of it. Uh, Mr. Ihab is saying for the connection point with the concrete element and the number of required poles for sure is pre-designed as per the load coming to the point. Um, also, he is asking like what could be recommended number of poles for connecting. Usually for the bracket connecting, whether on the floor or whether on the ceiling, usually we need a minimum number of six for connecting from the three sides. However, with less number, it can work. However, we need to secure that we are putting the efficient numbers. A pull-out test has been already done for this kind of fixations. I can share the results with you. And if needed to do a pull-out test on the site for this one, we are very helpful to do it. Mr. Mohammed is asking for the slides. I can also contact me at the end. I'll give you the PDF version of the slides. Um, Mr. Ashwin, he is mainly saying that it will be very helpful using the system. However, if the cost comparison here would be the main issue. Also, let me contact you at the end. I'll give you the comparison related to the material, the assembly, as well as the manufacturing. Uh, Mr. Abdurazik is saying, what are the types of sections? Mainly, we are using three types of sections, 90 by 90 and the 90 by 120 and the 90 by 160. The maximum load mainly will be determined by the span and by the distance between supports and the site condition. Generally, we are saying, for example, 40 kN as concentrated for the 160. It can be more, it can be less as per the span. As you know, the higher, longer the span, the less the, the, the member can take. Uh, Mr. Ashwini is saying that he's based in Kenya and how easily it can be available for him locally. Mainly, um, manufacturing in Germany and the transferring issue will not be that big issue. And also, we can provide you with the lead times just provide us with the application. We can very easily give you the lead time. Mr. Ashwin is asking about the standard size, mainly is coming in six meters as a standard size for them, six meters. And by this, and for any other questions, I'll be emailing you the, the answers, also the slides if you want to. However, I would like you then to go to the bowls uh, balls, uh, bar. If you just can answer those five symbol questions by yes or no, voting, symbol voting in the balls sidebar, which you'll find it in the top right of the presentation or in the top right of the uh, screen. Mr. Rady is saying we are conducting finite element analysis. Yes, we are conducting finite element analysis for the brackets fixation, whether on the floor, whether on the wall. Finite element will give you the stresses distribution on the brackets and the thickness that you need for the design. I'd like to thank Mr. Abdurazik for the, his questions. And Mr. Fortune, I would like to thank him. Thank you so much. And Thank you, Mr. Wasim. I hope it was very helpful in terms of the seismic area also. Uh, I'll send also the slides for Mr. Fortune. Mr. Rawdai, he is asking 
the structural design and calculation can be provided. Of course, as a technical team, we are providing a very detailed structural design and calculation for any kind of support you want, sending a very well neat report for you about the sections, the connections, and the spans. I would like you, again, a reminder, if you can just go, uh, jump to the balls and ask or answer the small questions, five questions that will reflect your feedback on the presentation and how helpful for you it was. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad. You're most welcome. And I'll, can you provide you the slides? I'll provide you with my email at the end, providing you with the slides. And then I would like you, thank you again. I, this is, this are in the, showing the picture. This is my, uh, contact details this is my email and this is my number for any kind of inquiry related to the system for any kind of uh, technical support uh, mr khalid i am basically based in ksa technical team and here's my number here's my email you just contact me very easily and i can send you these slides and also providing you with any kind of technical support needed thank you again mr anas And please, again, for the types of for the polls, because we need your feedback on the presentation and your feedback about how beneficial it was. Yes, Mr. Ali, I, of course, I can answer your question. Thank you again, Mr. Ihab, for attending. Hope it was beneficial for you. So for all questions related in the question side, I'll be emailing you the answer right after the presentation. If you just help me in the balls for the feedback uh, related to the efficiency of the webinar and how beneficial for you it was, in the top right, if you can answer the polls, thank you so much. So again, for the people who want to know the contact, these are this is my email and this is my mobile for any kind of contact related to the design, whether technical and uh, technical or any question question answering. So Mr. Wright is asking, like, do you provide training for design? Of course, we are providing trainings to the design. And we're also providing technical support and technical calculation for any type of site condition fixation. Mr. Ali is asking about the, the cost comparison with the classic system, the cost of the material. Uh, normally, the cost of the material itself will be a little bit higher than the conventional steel beam. However, the reduction here will happen in different types of the different other comparison, for example, the welding, the the labor cost, the timing, the galvanization, every portion of this will affect the design. Mr. Khalid is asking about the contact in Dubai and UAE in general. I'll also provide you with this contact details. You just can't contact me. I can give it to you and also tell you what are the available profiles. All of all profiles are available. However, just giving you the lead time, how much how much time will 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 it take to reach you? Mr. Ali Kamal is asking, is the Fisher Master System available at fixed Iberians? As of now, it's not available. And we are working on this, whether to provide it on, on, this, on, this, on, this, on this software or maybe in a, another, another different separate software. Y 
Thank you again, Mr. Abdurazik, and thank you, Mr. Khaled. I hope it was beneficial for you. I would like to thank you all for joining the webinar. And uh, here are again my contact details if you'd like to have any kind of um, conversation. And so Mr. Khalid is asking, like, do you provide training for experience? I will show you, uh, we have also done um, previous webinar just the one was previous like last last webinar was done for the fixed experience a video that is on our youtube channel showing the design and a kind of a little bit detailing for the design at fixed experience so it's available i can share you the link if you can just help me and uh, going for fisher middle east in our youtube channel you will find this video for fixed experience So Mr. Ashwin is asking about the, the curve price or the pricing in for the full range. You just can contact easily the uh, uh, we just can contact us, contact us easily and then we can provide you with the pricing. And then by this we are ending the webinars for the Fisher Massive System. I hope it was very beneficial for you and hope to see you so, soon again. And here are again my contact details for any kind of questions, for any kind of technical inquiries. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.